What is up, my fellow gaming goblins? Yidl here, coming at you with a brand spanking new hot out the oven Malga guide. I've been playing our favorite Samoan a ton since his release, racking up those hours, and as of right now, I landed rank 14 tank with him as my most played. So in this video, I'll be sharing what I learned, and that starts with how to get the most out of his abilities, ultimate, some tech, matchups, counters, and heroes that I think are good with him. Let's get right into it, starting with his guns. If you don't already have show accuracy on, I highly recommend you turn it on at least for a couple hours just so you can get used to the spread, because as you can see, the spread on Malga's guns are really bad. Once you get a good idea of that, feel free to swap it back to your regular crosshair of preference. Next thing with his gun is how crits work. Left gun flames, right gun crits. Left gun can crit if you headshot, but otherwise only right gun crits. Okay, so should you just go for headshots every time? No. Most of the time, going for headshots is a waste. If you're single firing, it's more consistent to just light them on fire and then get the free body shot crits. Exceptions being scoped heroes with a movement penalty and tanks like Winston where you almost can't miss the head. If you're shooting a tank with both guns, the general rule is to aim at the upper torso or neck. Like we learned earlier, the spread on dual shooting is really bad, so aiming for the head will result in missing most of your damage. Now let's talk about Overrun. It's very easy to see this ability and fall into the trap of thinking, I'm gonna use this to run through the crowd and curb stomp the shit out of someone. While you can use it like that, it's a lot more flexible. The potential for disengage and repositioning make up about two thirds of how you should use it. Thanks to the damage reduction in combination with the CC immunity, this ability is insane for bailing yourself out of a bad spot. Not only that, but if there's a pesky DPS controlling an angle, you can usually challenge it or maybe even take a high ground before the enemy team has time to react. So in short, you'll want to use this ability to engage, disengage, or reposition. Moving on to Cardiac Overdrive. This ability heals Malga and allies a percent for damage dealt to enemies, and it's best used as an engage or sustain. Meaning, if you're going to go in, or if the enemy team is going in on you, then that's the best time to use it since that's when the most damage is going to be dished out. Try not to get it forced out while your team is in the poking phase, but if it does get forced out, it's best to wait patiently for the cooldown to come back, otherwise, it's going to feel like you're fighting without a healer. Finally, his ultimate, Cage Fight. As of right now, I'd say this ultimate is the best tank ultimate in the game, if you're not winning most of your fights with it, you're probably using it wrong. One mistake people often make with it is trying to catch as many players in the cage fight as possible. In reality, less is more. For example, if you catch just the enemy tank in there, then the supports can't heal him without walking in themselves. And oftentimes, that's too late. Usually getting a kill on a tank is a free fight win, but that's not to say only old tanks. Just make sure whoever you catch in there, you can confidently solo them. Don't rely on the help of your team, otherwise you're just setting yourself up for disappointment. If you can wrap your head around that, then the only other thing to look out for with your ultimate is the counters. Are they saving EMP for you? Does the enemy team have nano for the tank? Do you have nano to match it? Once you start pressing tab and thinking a step ahead, it becomes really easy to win fights with cage fight. Let's talk tech. There's some cool interactions with Mauga's abilities that can give him a slight edge in game. Starting with his jump cancel. Using Overrun can get you places quicker, but what if I told you there was a way to get even quicker than that? If you play out the full ability, he stomps and stops in place. And if you cancel too early, he also stops in place. But if you cancel the jump right as you see the jump animation, then you'll get just a little more distance than you would if you commit to the stomp. Another little fun tech with Overrun is the gap jump. There's a lot of air you can cover with the extra jump on Override. Although learning every Malga rollout won't make you go from plat to top 500, getting a general feel for the distance and height of the jump can definitely clutch up some games. To perform this tech, all you need to do is jump early in accordance to where you want to land. For the last override tech, we have a variation of the multi-boop. Basically, if Malga charges into a wall or if an enemy spaces themselves far enough, it resets the boop, making them boopable again. My favorite way to use this is to just charge the enemy spawn doors. They pretty much have no choice but to wait it out, making it a clutch deny against recontest. A more advanced way of using this multi-boop is directional changes against a wall. So if you boop someone forward, then turn one direction, 
then turn towards them. Just like that, you'll be hitting a couple more boops than you would normally. Alrighty, let's talk Malga matchups. What's he good against? What does he struggle against? And what is good with him? Running through this tier list really quickly, we got S tier, and the first tank that Malga can completely demolish is Winston. He honestly can't even call it a matchup because Winston just doesn't really do anything against Malga other than dive his team. And Malga is basically the tank equivalent of Bastion. So yeah, not, not a very good matchup for him. The second tank on the list is Doomfist. Doomfist kind of gets destroyed by Malga as well. Malga oftentimes will just shoot Doom through his block. He can stomp Doom on the slams. He can charge Doom to block punches. He can charge Doom out of his ult and stomp him. So there's just a lot of uh, Malga rolling Doomfist potential. Overall, I would not recommend playing either of these two tanks against Malga. Moving on to A tier, we got Wrecking Ball, another dive tank that doesn't really like to take tank battles per se, but he has a way better time of just avoiding the Malga altogether. He can even use Minefield in Cage Fight, which honestly, that's trading like the worst tank ult for the best tank ult, so kind of value. But yeah, there's still the problem of Malga just sh shooting Wrecking Ball and erasing his health. Next up is Bastion. People like to play Bastion against Malga a lot, but generally I feel like Bastion's not a good pick against Malga. Since his hitbox is so big, it's really easy to light him on fire and just poke him from a distance. The best chance Bastion has is to go turret mode and shoot the Malga, but if the Bastion's unsupported, Malga can win this 1v1 easy. A smarter Malga would just altogether avoid the turret form and then just kill the Bastion afterward. For the most part, Bastion is a very fragile DPS versus Malga. Moving on to B tier, these are some of the heroes that I feel like can potentially win the matchup versus Malga. Starting off with Zarya, normally Zarya's do not want to take a fight with Malga. However, if she has both bubbles and 100 charge, she has a pretty solid chance of winning. But I think the strength in Zarya versus Malga matchup isn't so much of just running down the Malga, but just getting high charge and willing him down because he can't heal off of the bubbles or the Zarya, so he kind of just gets starved of heals. However, this is mostly playstyle and comp dependent because if the Zarya just holds W with only one bubble, the Malga can burn her through that one bubble or sometimes even two bubbles. So Zarya players got to be very careful for this matchup. Next up is Roadhog. You'd think Roadhog would be more farmable, but no, once again, it's a bit comp dependent, maybe even map dependent, because Roadhog can displace Malga pretty well. Like the hooks aren't hard to hit on this big wide target with a movement penalty. The problem is a lot of the times the Roadhog can't solo the Malga. He needs help from his supports, whether that be a Discord or an Ana throwing anti-nade. But if he ever has Whole Hog, he can just win the 1v1 with Whole Hog. So long story short, Roadhog can go from being a health pack for Malga to being a counter. Next up is Zenyatta. I figured I'd put him here, even though I don't feel like he's a complete counter to Malga. The thing with Zenyatta is you have to respect Discord. He discords you as Malga. You have to break line of sight. And once you do that, then it's not that big of a problem. But if you don't respect the Discord, you will very easily be countered by Zenyatta. His Transcendence also somewhat counters Cage Fight, but not entirely because there is about a two second difference in the duration. Next up is Junker Queen. She has a skinnier hitbox, so it's a bit harder for Malga to hit in combination with throwing knives being free and her ult being an anti. Also toss in that she uses a shotgun for damage, meaning she doesn't have to like hard peek the Malga to do damage. But all those things combined don't make her a counter. It just kind of makes her decent against Malga. Let's talk about Ramatra. When played right, he's not as much of a liability versus Malga as you might think. Between throwing up shield and just holding block, he does a pretty good job of not feeding the heals. His only fault is that he's not great for actually pressuring Malga, very team dependent. For those reasons, this matchup is an okay out of 10. A lot of people don't believe in this one, but Reinhardt does have a potentially favorable matchup versus Malga. If you think about it, he can shield to block heals. His charge could very easily win the trade if it's from close range. He could charge Malga out of stomp, and his ultimate is pretty free against Malga. Overall, he doesn't win the face-to-face -face brawl with Malga, but he has the potential to win just about everything else. Moving on to C tier, these are heroes I feel give Malga a bit of a tougher matchup. Starting with the first one, we have Reaper. As it is right now, it's really difficult to win the lifesteal battle versus Reaper, even if you're hitting your shots. He's definitely one of those heroes that you're going to need help taking care of. Next on the list is Widowmaker, another hero that you can't really deal with. Like from certain ranges, you can, you can poke at her and maybe light her on fire, but outside of that range, you can't do anything. You don't have a shield and she's just popping free shots. That's honestly the story for most tanks versus Widow. Last in C tier, we have Sombra. 
She's a super mobile hero with a tiny hitbox and a lot of damage, which is annoying for Malga, but it's even worse for his team, especially since Malga can't really help them. Throw that in with the fact that EMP straight up counters Malga's ultimate, and yeah, she deserves a spot on the counter list. And lastly, we have F tier. These are heroes that Malga will often get checked by or just struggle to play against. First up is Malga himself. Who would have thought? I mean, he does a lot of damage. His cage fight cuts him off from heals. Charge counters charge. I mean, I don't think I really need to explain why Malga counters Malga. Next on the list is a surprising one, Symmetra. Symmetra is a pain to play against. Having to shoot her deployable turrets means that Malga will not be healing himself. On top of that, she has a very skinny hitbox, so it's extremely difficult to kill a Symmetra, especially if they're getting pocketed. Her teleporter also teleports herself or anyone else inside of your cage fight out of the cage fight. If the sim isn't inside of the ult, she also just gets level 3 beam off the shield. And speaking of shields, her ult is the better shield, so there's just a lot of things stacked in the favor of sim players. Moving on to the next one, we have D.Va. As you guys might have guessed, D.Va matrixes a lot of Malga's damage, meaning that Malga can't really heal himself. The D.Va on her own usually isn't going to kill the Malga, but that Matrix really comes in clutch for when her team shoots at Malga. If you're the Malga player, all you can really do is just hide until she drops Matrix and hope she doesn't use it again. Next up is Sigma, who's pretty much on this list for kind of the same reason as D.Va. His shield in combination with Kinetic Grasp just has a lot of damage eating uptime. The only way for Malga to really win this matchup is to just hold W on the Sigma, or spam for so long that all those cooldowns are forced, but if the Sigma has a somewhat competent team, that's not gonna go too well. Let's talk about Orisa. Between Fortify, Javelin Spin, and her Spear Toss, she has a lot of tools for denying Malga from running over a team or getting heals off of her. So just like the other tanks on this tier, she's a decent Malga counter. And last but not least on the list, we have Ana, the absolute best counter to Malga. Why? Because sleep is easy to hit, and so is Nade. If Malga does not have a Kiriko on his team to cleanse him, this is a brutal matchup. It's just, it's a flat out counter, what can I say? Anti just means you can't heal yourself. There's not much to it. The best thing you can do as Malga is try to avoid using Cardiac Overdrive until you see that Nade gets forced out. So you'll have to take a fight and basically wait till the Nade gets thrown, then come back and go in. Overall, very difficult and annoying matchup because again, if the Ana just chooses not to throw her nade, then it's going to be pretty hard to take space. If I had to say which heroes were good with him, I would start by saying that Ana is a top tier pick because having an anti nade for an enemy Malga is incredible as well as Sleep Dart. Nano Malga is just a really good combo. He heals a lot and deals a lot of damage. Almost equally as important is Kiriko because cleanse. Enemy team has Ana, cleanse. Kitsune with Malga is also a crazy fight winner. On a DPS side of things, I would say Sombra is a really good pick for her ability to EMP enemy Malgas, but also because she can set up dives with the Malga, which is pretty useful. And she can also fend for herself pretty well. And then a good old 3-in-1 is Mei, Reaper, and Bastion. All three of these guys benefit from Malga's Cardiac Overdrive by a lot. They just kind of get in there and brawl and... Malga does that pretty well. The healing they get out of it is kind of game breaking in my opinion. Just like that, you've now completed the crash course on how to play Malga like a top 500 tank. I hope you guys found this video helpful or entertaining, and if you did, be sure to show it by backflip body slamming that like, subscribe, and notifications bell icon. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, good luck on the grind.